In this video, I'm going to show you how I cut a round tabletop using a circle jig and a router. Now this jig that I'm using is made by Rockler and this video is supported by Rockler. I'll leave links down in the description uh, to Rockler and a direct link for this jig if you want to check that out. So I just want to say thanks to Rockler for supporting what I do. Now this jig is a really simple jig to use. I'll get into the setup here in just a little bit later on in this video. So be sure and stick around for that. Now I'll give you a little bit of information on how I went about cutting this. Uh, first of all, I didn't have a router bit that was long enough to cut through the entire inch and a half of this dimensional lumber. So I took several passes and went the full depth of the router bit that I'm actually using, but I didn't actually get to cut all the way through like I said. It's probably worth noting here that I am going in a clockwise motion here with this router and anytime you're holding a router and freehanding or with a jig like this you want to go counterclockwise so left to right when you're holding a router right to left and a router table. Now I just used a jigsaw to finish up the cut uh, that got me all the way through this inch and a half dimensional lumber. Uh, and that was pretty self-explanatory. Uh, once I finished off the cut, the rest of this waste would, would just fall off. Now that left me with a little bit of material that I had to clean up around the edges. Uh, and I just used another straight bit, but one that had a guide bearing. And that guide bearing would ride along the previous cut that I made with the other router bit and cleaned it up pretty nicely. Okay, so now that you've seen me use this jig to actually cut this tabletop out, I want to talk about the setup here. This is the jig, and as you, as you can see, there are some pre-drilled holes. Now, I'm using an older skill brand router. Uh, my holes for this router weren't there. I had to drill my own, uh, but they look just like the factory holes, so it's kind of cool. But the way I went about this was I took the, cl the little clear plate off of the router. Most routers have these. Um, there's three screws holding it on. I just marked them with a sharpie so I knew which ones they were. Lined it up with the center hole on the jig. Marked the jig with, with a pencil. And then I just drilled the holes with a drill bit. But this drill bit has a an adjustable uh, countersink collar. It's just held on with a couple of Allen screws so you can adjust the depth there. So I wanted to use the thicker part of that drill bit for the screws uh, that were used to hold my router on. So after I did that, after I drilled the holes, uh, I could mount the router and go to town. Now this is the router bit that I used, uh, and this is this will allow you to plunge and then start cutting. Uh, so the end of that router bit will plunge into, into the wood, and then you can just start moving the router uh, to uh, make your circle. Now when I got done, because my router bit was not long enough, I had to finish it off with this. After I cut it out with a jigsaw, I went back with this bearing, the guide on this router bit followed what I cut with the other bit and then the part of the router bit there that's below that bearing cut the remainder of what I couldn't reach. Uh, so in my case I had to use both of these bits but in your case uh, if you have a longer a longer router bit uh, for the initial cut you won't need this. Okay so for the other end of this jig it's pretty simple we have a T-bolt that just slips into this slot and it's got like a little track that it can slide back and forth. Uh, we're going to add a washer and a star knob. And the star knob is what holds it in place. Uh, so it just locks down uh, and just tightens it down to the jig. Now the uh, underside of this uh, T-bolt, it, it also has a, uh, a threaded insert in it to where you can insert a couple of different options. But in this case, we're going to be looking at this little pin. One side of the pin has uh, threads to go into the T-bolt. The other side is just a rounded pin that would slide into a pre-drilled hole in the center of what you're cutting. And just insert that by threading it in. It's backwards threads. And so you line that up and install the jig into place. And at this point, you can determine at what length of cut you want and so this has a pretty good good range of motion here so we can go all the way back and cut uh, really small tight circles or we can extend it on out and cut larger circles like this table that I cut and so what I do is when I tighten this down I made a little, little mark with a pencil around the washer so in case it comes loose I know where to tighten it back down to 
Uh, so I tighten it down, and of course, at this point in time, you would have the router mounted to the end of the jig. Uh, but just make sure you have that good and tight. That star knob is there to just really tighten down. Uh, it will still spin in that hole because of that pin. And so it's really, really simple, really cool little jig. Um, I'm very happy with it. But of course, you could always make this jig on your own. Uh, but if you're in the market to purchase one, check out the links in the description. There's a direct link to this jig, and you can also check out Rockler for other products. They have a lot of woodworking products. So thanks for watching, guys. Subscribe if you're not subscribed, and we'll see you next time.